Hey guys, welcome to devlog number six for a space game that I'm making in the Unreal Engine with my buddy Rich, and we actually have quite a few new collaborators to talk about today as well, like the guy who made the cool background music here, and the guy who made this cool material that puts names and numbers and even logos on the sides of our spaceships. So firstly, I want to talk about Trooper Booper, or Peter from Australia as I like to call him. This is somebody who reached out to us wanting to collaborate with music design. I listened to his work over on Bandcamp, which I will leave a link to, and it was incredible. So I threw a basic challenge at him. I say basic as if I'm a music composer, but I threw a challenge at him to design some menu music for our game. I gave him some ideas about what I wanted it to sound like, and this is a little taste of what he designed. Yeah, I've listened to this whole piece. It's much longer than this, uh, like 20, 30 times through now. It doesn't get old. I love it. It's fantastic. So uh, I think Peter from Australia might actually just be like John Williams' handle or something. I don't know. We got some major talent coming into the game. Production quality is going up. It's uh, It makes me want to try and make the game even better to match up with the talent of the other people working on the game. Really excited about working with Peter. He's got some some good stuff going for the actual in-game music. We're learning a lot about that. And in fact, I want to show you how we're going to handle some of the in-game audio triggers. So here we are in a level and it's got a very basic background track, not too busy. But as we come across a discovery here, represented by a white sphere, you will hear a little trigger sound played over the bass background music. So some violins come in here that can indicate a uh, less hostile discovery, something more ominous, something more interesting. Uh, we can have lots of different types of discovery or alert background music cues that can uh, overlay on the bass track to add what is basically dynamic in-game music. Really excited about this whole process. It's the first time I've attempted constructing anything like this and uh, learning a lot about it, uh, learning a lot about audio design in-game. And I'm still a noob, but I am learning and it's exciting. Now, the next collaborator I wanna talk about goes by the name of Uriah. Uh, this guy is pretty well known, I think, within the indie game development world. He's helped out on quite a few other projects. Super knowledgeable about Unreal Engine. He's been on the project helping both myself and Rich solve a lot of problems. And he made this incredible material for us to use where it puts names, numbers, logos on the sides of spaceships. I actually am using, I'm stealing really his logo for the side of my spaceship at the moment till I make my own. Uh, but it does it dynamically so that we can change the name of a ship in game and it will update the text on the side of the ship or we can change its whole number in game. This is going to be really useful for spawning in enemy ships and giving them different names and having those names show up on the sides of those ships. I think it's going to add a huge amount to the production quality and the the sense of realism within the game world. This seems like it would be simple to do. It is not. He walked me through the process of how he made the material to a degree, and I think I absorbed like 30% of it. It is super complicated, uh, and he's really talented, so it's been awesome getting his help. He's actually working on his own game project that's sort of an FPS style game set on Mars. It looks incredible. I'm going to link his YouTube channel below. I'm very excited to watch him progress on his project because he's incredibly talented and super knowledgeable about the Unreal Engine. So 
I think whatever he makes is going to be an absolute blast and uh, I'll be following him as well. All right, so on the back end of things, last week Rich finished converting the project to a C++ project. And this basically turns an Unreal project into sort of a hybrid of using the Blueprint system, which is a node-based way of programming sequences to a code-based and node-based. If you're not a programmer, you can build an entire Unreal Engine game in the node blueprint tool. Um, you still have to learn a lot. I would argue that you almost have to learn coding to an extent just to use all of the tools within Blueprint. But once you start integrating C++ and the actual code into the engine, I believe it can give you better performance cases. It gives programmers a little bit more control, a little bit more tools. Um, it, there are some downsides in that you have to start compiling things more often. And for the artists or the people working within the engine, like myself, uh, we might not be able to look at that code and do anything with it. So it limits my ability to change certain mechanics within the engine. Ultimately, it seems to be the smart way to do things if you can, to do things in code and in Blueprint. Last week, Rich also implemented the very first prototype for our radar in the lower left corner. It shows a little triangle with our ship spinning on it. This week, he updated that so that we can now see enemy ships on the radar. So if we spawn a ship, let's say five kilometers away, I can now fly towards that ship uh, know where it is and basically begin my turn and burn maneuver to slow myself down so that I can kind of stop once I get to it the next step for this radar system will be to render asteroids on it and other objects and stuff like that so it'll become a pretty useful navigational tool last week I also did a lot of playing around with the particle effect systems creating new explosion for our missiles in the game. Rather, I downloaded an asset pack and started pulling it apart and making the effects that I wanted with this asset pack. Um, and I made railgun firing effects. Rich actually updated our railgun so that it can now, when it passes through a ship, it actually loses velocity. This will be something that I think is demonstrated better at a distance. And also it can penetrate fully through one ship but by the time it gets to a second ship, it might stop. We can tweak this mechanic a little bit, but it's just kind of a cool little added detail that he threw into the game. Now, next devlog, I'm excited to get into some big progress that we made this week on AI nav mesh. Rich basically built the nav mesh system for how our game is going to control enemy AI spaceships. They need to get around. We can set a waypoint from one spot to another spot, and now a ship should be able to navigate its way around. It's a little finicky here and there, but he got the basics working in, so dialing it and polishing it from this point shouldn't be as challenging as just building it from the ground up. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on behind the scenes there, but uh, I'll save those details for next week. Also, I worked on the procedural content generation system. This is going to be a tool that I'll be using or any level editor will be using to make large space levels pretty quickly. So what it allows me to do is spawn giant asteroid fields within a parameter. So I can draw this little green outline here, which will say where to spawn the asteroids. I can then go into my procedural content generation graph, determine how dense I want all of it to be, what type of asteroids to spawn, all that stuff. And then I can also draw negative space within there. So if I want to have either an empty area or I want to create a negative space where then I custom build out certain assets there to, to exist in a certain way. It'll give me the tools to do that. This is going to be really useful because a lot of the levels I want to build will be fairly large. So rather than having a hand place, you know, 5, 20 square kilometers worth of asteroids, uh, I should be able to do it relatively quickly and manipulate it relatively easily. Shout out to Uriah again for helping me uh, get past some of the learning curves with this system. So that's it for devlog number six. If you guys want to follow along for more daily updates and content, check out our Discord in the video description. It's basically where we met all of our collaborators. And there's tons of people there giving us good ideas and sort of chiming in on updates or problems and things that we have. Um, it's really cool getting real-time community feedback as we're building the game. And people are throwing out ideas already that I'm like, hey, that's actually a better way of solving this problem than I initially thought about. So check out that Discord. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've missed any of the other devlogs, you can find a link to the playlist in the video description and check out the original concept video that'll kind of show you what we're going for uh, 
more in a vague way, but I'll show you some of the initial concept art and fun stuff as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.